All the pieces to the cosmological puzzle are now in place, except the most important one. The question is, does matter completely or only partially fill the cosmos? The distinction seems trivial, but the effect is crucial. A partially filled cosmos is young, but a completely filled cosmos is old. The difference is due to the effect that matter has on space and time, and the issue goes to the very heart of a common misconception about the Big Bang. Typically, the Big, big, big bang, 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 bang is portrayed as matter emerging explosively from a quantum fluctuation and expanding into empty space. But according to Big Bang cosmologists, that is not the right picture. What they believe happened is that both matter and space emerged together from the cosmic egg and expanded simultaneously into hyperspace. This is a rudimentary model of the Big Bang in which the entire universe of some 100 billion galaxies is represented by just a couple dozen. And, of course, space has been reduced to just two dimensions to show how it curves in hyperspace. Nonetheless, the basic principles still apply. In a Big Bang universe, matter is evenly distributed in space so that the cosmos is the same everywhere. There are minor variations locally, but overall, matter fills all of space and, incredibly, has no center or edge in a Big Bang cosmos. When viewed close up, the Big Bang and creation cosmologies look very much alike. Both appear to have evenly distributed galaxies in an expanding space. But when you step back and take a more distant view, the difference becomes clear. In a creation cosmology, matter has both a center and an edge in space. Whereas a Big Bang universe is the same everywhere and matter has no center. But is there evidence for a centerless universe? The famed cosmologist Stephen Hawking has suggested that indeed there is little or no evidence. In his book, The Large Scale Structure of Space Time, Hawking and his co author Ellis said, We are not able to make cosmological models without some admixture of ideology. Ideology means unproven beliefs. Here, Hawking and Ellis admit that they must rely on unproven beliefs in order to develop their Big Bang model of the universe. Elsewhere in the book, they are implying that the universe is approximately spatially homogeneous. Essentially, their unproven belief is that the cosmos is fundamentally uniform. Despite the lack of evidence, their ideology requires that the universe must be uniform and have no center. What evidence there is, though, suggests just the opposite. In 1997, two scientists made observations which strongly suggest that the entire mass in the universe is rotating about a central axis, just as predicted by the creation cosmology. To date, secular scientists, who must make the observations fit within their Big Bang cosmos, have no satisfactory explanation. When matter has a center in space, it distorts space. Inside the depression, physical processes and time slow down. Today, the distortion is minor compared with the size of the universe and the passage of time varies by just a few percent across the width of the depression. But the cosmos is expanding, and in the past, the universe was smaller. The redshift of light from distant sources is a direct evidence of the expansion. Light sources emit small wavelets of light called photons. Light is literally stretched out as it passes through space, 
which is also being stretched out as the cosmos expands. The farther light travels in space, the longer and redder it becomes. Besides the evidence from observation, Einstein's equations of relativity also predict the expansion of space. But beyond the scientific evidence for the expansion of the universe, there are 17 verses in the Bible such as this. It is he who sits above the vaults of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. That's Isaiah 40, 21 and 22. Or this one, Jeremiah 10, 12. It is he who made the earth by his power, who established the world by his wisdom, and by his understanding he has stretched out the heavens. The differential rate of time in my proposed creation cosmology is scientifically sound. Both experiments and Einstein's theory of relativity confirm that in a cosmos only partially filled with matter, the rates of physical processes would be slower at the center of the matter than at the edge. But rather than put your faith in any human theory, you should use this one as an example that God can indeed work out what may seem impossible to us. Even if my particular theory should eventually turn out to be wrong, I know that there is a correct creation model of the cosmos, because observation and scripture both confirm that God created the universe very recently. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth. Exodus 20.11 